What's up YouTube? Jason here with By My Bits. Today I'm doing a little bit of an upgrade vlog style introduction to my soon to be new server. And I say soon to be because right now it's on hold, I have a few things to work out, but I did kind of want to start a video series to show my upgrade process through this new server because it is a learning experience for me, which makes it kind of exciting. So stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, so like I said, this is a learning experience. Fish out of water. Don't know what I'm doing, and that is exciting to me. I love running into things that I don't understand, I don't know, I don't know completely, and learning how to do it. So when you do the same exact thing over and over with computers, it does tend to get a little boring. It's just throw a motherboard here, throw a SATA cable there, and you get yourself a computer, and whatever. It's kind of boring after all. But the point is, I decided that I was going to upgrade my server. I wanted to get something a little bit more enterprise class, something more professional grade. So I went to eBay. I took a look on eBay for a while, actually, trying to find out the, uh, what the best server I could get for the money I was looking to spend. And I think I finally found something, at least I hope. So let's take a look. This is the new server. Now, this is going to be a 24 bay not sure on what a, what operating system to run, but it's going to be a 24 bay server. Probably, I'm looking at possibly either Unraid or FreeNAS. I'm still, you know, it's still, I don't know. I'm not really sure yet. So, here's some of the specs. This is a dual Xeon processor with two E52560s, I believe. 64 gigabytes, 1600 DDR3 ECC RAM, and well, like I said before, 24 bays. But here's the catch, and here's something that I have to figure out that I'm actually hoping is going to be figured out by something I ordered on eBay, and that is network connectivity. Okay, so as you see here, there are two Ethernet ports, uh, Etho 1 and Etho 2, well I guess Etho 0, Etho 1. These are actually SP, or SFP ports, and we have one port over here, which is a standard Ethernet port. But I learned something that I really didn't think about before, and what I learned Keep in mind that this is all completely new to me. So someone out there is going to be like, well, no shit, Jason, you're such a dumbass. How'd you not know that? Whatever. What I learned was that on some of these enterprise class server motherboards, the Ethernet port that's on the back is only for the motherboard itself, the BIOS connection. That's it. It doesn't actually provide any kind of link with whatever system that you're using. Did not know that. Did not even think about that. So when I plugged in the Ethernet cable to my regular switch right here it didn't work well it did but when i connected to the ip address that this assigned all it did was give me the bios management screen it did not actually allow me to connect to the free nas that was pre-installed when it came with it and i know it's pre-installed but uh, i'm not really sure if i'm even going to keep it so it doesn't really matter right now however it does have two sfp ports so what i thought in my ingenious revolution of an idea was plug it into my sfp port on my router right not so much so for some reason, these two SFP ports on my HP Pro Curve 1810G, uh, focus, 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 there we go. On my 1810G24 uh, port switch, this is the J9450A. For some reason, these ports would not communicate directly with that. And I'm not entirely sure why until I got on Google I took a look at you know the specs on this and the compatibilities and Googled a bunch of different things and I found something that said that these HP Pro Curve uh, switches will actually not work with any kind of cables that are not like OEM certified or whatever. I'm not going to pretend to know the difference between a cheap SFP cable and an HP certified OEM cable. I have no idea. I'm sure there's some kind of chip or something in it. So my little cable that I got, my SFP Plus, that I actually use to connect my server with my main computer uh, to get 10 gigabit connection between the two would not work. I know, it really sucked. However, I did hop on eBay. I did find one that was branded as HP. I ordered that in. It's a one meter, three foot cable. So I'm hoping, you know, well, for one, I'm hoping that'll reach for right now in my testing environment. And for two, I'm hoping it works in general. Now the only downside is, and this is what really sucks, is that this new server has these two SFP ports. And I tried to look for the motherboard, you know, that was in the eBay listing, try to find that motherboard spec sheet to figure out what kind of ports these were. But I couldn't find that information. So I'm not entirely sure if it's a 10 gigabit or a 1 gigabit port. If it's a 1 gigabit port, that really sucks. 
I mean, that really sucks. Now, I know, going into my server, these are one gigabit ports, okay? I know this. Completely aware of the fact that I have a gigabit switch, not a 10 gigabit switch. Whatever. In fact, these last two ports share with these ports on the end of the router. So I can, if I use these, I can't use these. Not really that big of a deal. As long as it works, I'm happy. Good to go. However, the server that I got, come to find out, all of the PCI slots are used for RAID cards. The RAID cards, of course, are being used for the 24 base in the front. Kinda sucks. The reason why that sucks is that I cannot take my 10 gigabit card out of my main server right now that I have connected to my computer and put it in that one. So, if I do happen to get this thing up and running, basically I'm going to lose the ability of 10 gigabit connections between my server and my main computer, which I'm going to be completely honest with you, I have grown to fall in love with, and it has been tremendously useful, especially when I move files to and from multiple hard drives, all at the same time, reading, writing, whatever, all at the same time, it has just been... It has been night and day from a gigabit connection. I can tell you this right now, it's gonna cripple me if I go back to gigabit. I might actually cry, just a little bit. Okay, so right now, I have this port completely freed up, right? I know I just said that they're all full. However, these two, these are actually two cards right here. One, two, these are the RAID cards that go up front and connect all the hard drives. These, this is actually the four port switch that I use to get temporary connectivity to the server so I can manage the free NAS and just test things out and make sure everything is up and running. And this is the third RAID card that is going to be managing, this actually manages the top layer. So when I was filling in drives, I was just filling in this, uh, this third layer here because this one actually manages the top two. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to list the motherboard in the description below. So if anybody has any experience working with these, you know, enterprise class server motherboards, you know, feel free to let me know. Maybe you can find information on this motherboard and tell me whether or not these are 10 gigabits because I'm not entirely sure. The cable that I ordered said it supposedly should be possibly maybe here by Friday, but it hasn't actually shipped yet. So I don't really know when it's going to be here. It might be like a week or two weeks. I have no idea. I ordered it off eBay, so who really knows when they're going to send it. Now this brings me to question number two, more for myself, is what operating system am I going to run? Now I wanted to get an entirely new server because I wanted ECC memory, just so I could run some sort of a parity setup in Linux, you know, with free NAS or whatever, and not have any issues with the RAM. As a matter of fact, that's been the number one reason holding me back from running FreeNAS on this. This is supposed to be a temporary Windows 10 machine, or Windows 7 before, and then Windows 10, and it's been temporary for many years now. So it's finally time to upgrade that. I'm caught between two operating systems. Operating number one, FreeNAS. Operating number two, Unraid. I'm not sure yet. There's pros and cons to each. Specifically, the ZFS file system will run a shitload faster than an Unraid file system will. However, and this is a big thing for me, I have 11, let's see, two down there. Okay, so I have 13 four terabyte hard drives, right? 13, and only have equivalent of three of them in empty space. Across all of the hard drives, I have three of them equivalent of empty space. If I move stuff around, consolidated stuff, I could get three completely freed up. So I'm stuck here with this little issue where I don't have six hard drives to put into a free NAS array, right, to get a new loot or a new pool of drives ready to go, right? So I don't have six drives to spare. I only have three, technically. If I really worked for it, I could have three. So that's kind of the downside of the free NAS is that I would need to buy essentially three more hard drives just to get the pool started. Once I got it started and I was able to temporarily hold everything in those hard drives, build my new one, copy stuff over, free up the other hard drives, and then start them with the old hard, okay, that would work. I just need more drives. I don't really want to go out and buy three more drives, possibly even four, depending on how much space I may or may not be able to clear up. With Unraid, however, you can create a new pool and you can expand that. In fact, you can do that with different size drives. So I could use, you know, a bunch of my 500 gigabyte drives if I really wanted to. Not that I will, but I could. So ultimately, going with an Unraid would save me money from having to buy new drives, but Unraid does cost $130 for the Pro license, and in my particular situation with how many drives I have, I need the Pro license. In fact, that's the reason why I got this thing is because I cannot expand this thing anymore. Oh, a little tidbit. This port is shoddy as shit and doesn't work all the time. So found that out by accident. I was having issues with drives. Sometimes it fell, sometimes it wouldn't and it was just freaky as shit. 
finally put another good drive in there and it had the same problem. So found out that port's bad. I swapped the SATA cables. I've, you know, wiggled it. Totally didn't work, but figured I'd try. Anyways, Unraid, free NAS. I'm leaning towards Unraid just for the reason that you can expand a pool. I'm leaning towards Unraid. And especially because of the new Unraid, the 6 point whatever, does support two parity drives. But it's not the biggest deal to me. I mean, as far as how many parity drives, it was, it was just one thing pushing me closer to free NAS. What is the big deal is being able to expand it. So I'd like to know your thoughts. Free NAS, Unraid. Let me know in the comments. Free NAS, Unraid. What do you think? I don't really have any more updates. The only thing I've done with this server is plug it in, uh, swap out one of the RAID cards for a uh, an Ethernet cable or, an, or I'm sorry, an Ethernet card, just so I could fiddle with it. Um, so I don't really have much else to say. I just played with it really. Uh, I put in some spare drives. I built a couple pools, and it ran like the old free NAS I used to run on my super old server with a Q660 or 6600. So nothing really too new. Aside from the new updates that FreeNAS has, it's kind of a similar world. Um, I have not had a chance to, to mess with Unraid yet because I want to make sure I get everything done and ready to go before I start my 30 day free trial with Unraid. That way I do have 30 days to pick it up, set it down, you know, mess with it when I can, not mess with it when I can't, that sort of thing, and not run out of time in order to experiment with that. So, especially because I'm not even sure if I'm going to keep it. Once I find out how to keep it, then I'll go buy it. But it's a lot cheaper to buy one license for Unraid than it is to buy. Uh, three or four hard drives. So before I leave today, I want you guys to listen to this thing. Actually, I should have said this. This is another thing. Okay, this is a huge thing, and I can't believe I forgot it. This thing is loud as crap. Like seriously, it is loud as shit. Watch. Well, oh, it's probably. Yeah, yeah. I should uh. I should plug that in. And it's all these. It's these hot swappable like 80 millimeter fans. Holy shit. So yeah, it's freaking loud. It is like mind boggling, numbing loud. So that is a big problem because my computer is right there. This server is right here. Hell no, hell no. I have to figure that out. So again, if you anybody out there has any experience with this, yes, I am stupid when it comes to this type of shit, enterprise level stuff. Let me know in the comments if there's a better solution. Here's my thought. This is my idea. I have not explored it too much, but this is my thinking, right? I'm gonna take the passive cooling out of this server case, and I'm gonna put two CPU coolers, like low profile CPU coolers on the Xeons, right? And then I'm gonna take out those 80 millimeter fans, and I'm gonna wire in standard 120 millimeter fans, quieter ones, right? So my thought process here, so my idea, again, I'm probably kind of stupid in all this, is that the additional cooling from the fans on the CPUs combined with the lower cooling coming from the 120 millimeter fans should balance itself out and keep my processors from overheating and still be able to keep the hard drives a relatively cool speed, especially because I don't see them getting overworked. I mean, they're not all gonna be spinning up at once if it is Unraid. Um, and if they are, I, I just, I don't really see them overheating being in my environment here. I mean, it's pretty cool in my basement. So that's my idea. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. If you have any tips, tricks, you know, judgments, think I'm stupid, tell me about it. Whatever you want to do, just comment in the comments below. I'd love to hear some solutions, your ideas uh, to a couple of these problems. I don't even know how to approach the whole gigabit thing because if, if this is only one gigabit and the, the ethernet is only one gigabit and I can't put any extension cards, the only solution is to ignore basically eight of my drive slots in order to gain a 10 gigabit connection and that only goes to this it doesn't even do that right so I'm gonna have to I can't even do that that doesn't even work for me so I don't really know what to do with that so there's a lot of problems a lot of hurdles that I have to get over but it's exciting because I don't know it and um, 
Believe it or not, I really do love running into new things like this that I don't understand that I can do on my time and learn on my, my own time, do the research, and try it out because it's new and I truly enjoy that. So thanks for watching guys. I'm sorry this is going to be a multi-part thing, but I wanted to get something up because I'm excited about this new server um, and it's probably going to be a couple weeks before I dive into it again just because I have to get the new cables whenever that comes then play around with it some more, figure out if this thing decides to connect to it or not. So I still have a lot of work on my end to get this thing going, but I just kind of wanted to put this video out there and get some comments from, you know, my watchers who maybe low or know a lot more about this kind of stuff than I do, uh, because, hey, I'm here to learn, you're here to learn, let's all learn together. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe below, have a good day.